welcome back in continuation to the last lecture where we discussed uh, uh, primarily about syntax of uh, predicate logic where we discussed about uh, uh, some of the building blocks of uh, predicate logic. Um, so predicate logic was uh, uh, one of the important building blocks of predicate logic are variables, constants, functional symbols and predicates. These are the four things that we have discussed in greater detail and we discussed about the meanings of uh, these things. Uh, and then we discussed about uh, one of the two important uh, operators which is which is which makes predicate logic distinct from the propositional logic so they are quantifies so we require these quantifies uh, uh, especially uh, uh, to talk about certain things such as uh, if you want to say that all birds are black uh, for example uh, you need to have a quantifies uh, and then in that context we introduce two quantifiers first is for all x and the second one is there exists some x and then let, later we discussed about uh, uh, the scope of a quantifier and when a given formula in a predicate logic is uh, considered to be having free variables etc and when we say that a given formula is a closed formula or when a given formula has some kind of ground terms etc and all all these things which we have discussed in greater detail in the last class and also we also discussed about we also discussed about uh, some of the important uh, formulas uh, uh, some of the important properties of quantifiers especially uh, whether or not quantifiers distributes etc and all these are the things which we have seen and in that context we have seen that uh, when the quantifiers are the same for example uh, if you have for all x for all y and then p x y it is same as for all y and for all x p x y. So the order does not make any big difference especially when you have the same quantifiers. So now in continuation with the syntax of predicate logic. So what we will be doing uh, now is we will be discussing something about some of the formation trees of uh, a given well formed formula in a predicate logic. So just as in the case of uh, propositional logic we have uh, something called a unique formation tree with respect to a given well formed formula just like that uh, in the case of uh, a predicate logic as well uh, we have for each given formula you have a corresponding tree a formation tree. So the advantage of having formation tree is simply this that uh, suppose if you are not given any parenthesis etc and all so once you draw the for formation trees uh, then there will not be much ambiguity with respect to the parenthesis uh, that are concerning the given formula. So now uh, the formation trees uh, just as in the case of our propositional logic we can make formation rules for the well formed formulas in predicate logic explicitly and the definition of such terms as the definition of such terms as occurrences more precise by reformulating everything in terms of formation trees. So what we mean by formation tree uh, in the context of uh, propositional logic uh, here is the definition of uh, formation tree. So what I am trying to simply say is, is that each and every given formula uh, uh, will come up with its own unique kind of tree or a formation tree. So suppose if you say for all x uh, p x y uh, uh, implies uh, q x y for example that will have some certain specific kind of formation a unique kind of formation tree uh, when, when you compare with another formula such as p x y implies not q x y for example that will have its own formation tree. So each formula comes up with its unique formation tree. So now what is the definition of a formation tree a formation tree is a finite rooted dyadic tree. Uh, where each node uh, the one which is at the topmost uh, point uh, that is considered to be the node the root point it is like a tree with a trunk and then you have branches and leaves etc. So a formation tree is a finite rooted dyadic tree where each node carries a formula that is a given formula will be the will be sitting at the node and each non atomic formula suppose if it is an atomic formula the tree ends there itself if it is considered to be non atomic formula in the context of propositional logic p all the 
uh, individual letters such as uh, prepositional variables such as P, Q, R, etc. and all. There are atomic uh, formulas. In the context of uh, predicate logic, constants, individuals, etc., they all come under the category of uh, atomic formulas. Um, so uh, it carries a formula and each non atomic formula branches into its immediate formulas and these formulas are called as sub formulas. So for instance if A is considered to be a formula then the formation tree for A is considered to be a kind of unique formation tree which carries uh, that particular kind of formula at its root. So one important remark that uh, I would like to make here is, is that uh, if we can identify the formulas each and every given formula with respect to its formation trees in the abbreviated style then obviously there will be no uh, confusion or ambiguity etc because we face this particular kind of problem earlier especially in the context that uh, suppose if the parentheses are not given then we follow certain kind of uh, uh, priority uh, which we will be using on the logical operators that we are using in the given formula. So uh, in the context of uh, uh, propositional logic uh, and the connective end is given the utmost importance and then followed by that R and then of course negation is there and then implication and double implication that is the order that we follow in the case of uh, propositional logic this is just a mere convention. So one of the important thing which I like to point out here is, is that if we can have a formation tree for a given formula then there obviously there will be no confusion and all. So that formula represent that unique tree represents a given kind of formula. So that is the advantage of having the formation trees. So for example in the context of propositional logic suppose if you are given a formula like this then its corresponding formation tree will be like this for example if you have a formation tree like this P implies Q and Q implies R implies P R so this is one particular kind of string implies not Q R yes so this tells us that P implies Q uh, and Q implies R implies this one and the whole thing implies this one. So now the formation tree for this particular kind of uh, formula this is considered to be a well formed formula. Suppose if you write uh, P Q implies not R this is not considered to be a well formed formula that we have discussed in greater detail in the context of propositional logic. So now this formula will come up with this unique formation tree. So the first thing that we will be doing is this so this is considered to be a non atomic formula if it is an atomic formula it will end with only letters such as P Q R etc uh, not P etc. This is not an atomic formula so then uh, this will be uh, we will be expanding the uh, expanding this formula into uh, the branches or leaves which you can call so that till to such an extent that we will end up with only atomic formulas. So now this is going to be like this first so this branches into the first formula that we have on the left hand side is this thing P implies Q and Q implies R implies P R R this is the first one and then it branches into not Q R S. Yes. So now uh, this further changes into not Q of S this will become Q R S and then this Q R S still it is not an atomic formula so this is considered to be complex uh, molecular formula which consists of two atomic formulas and all. So when two atomic formulas combine and then it will become uh, molecular formula then it further reduces to this thing Q S. So this is on the right hand side now this branch leads to P implies Q and Q R R and then the next formula that uh, you will be reading is P R R. So this is the way with in which you pass this formula or you will read this particular kind of formula this is a mere kind of convention and all 
which one will be following. <coughs> so this is still a non atomic formula this reduces to P and R and then this reduces to P implies Q Q R R and this further reduces to P and Q and Q and R. So these are the things uh, so now we ended up with uh, all atomic uh, sentences and all and this completes our tree the formation tree for a given formula uh, this whole big tree. Suppose uh, if you change uh, this particular kind of formula into some other thing and all not Q or something like that then it will have its own formation tree and all. So now till to this extent it is same uh, now it will become uh, not Q or S not Q or S. Suppose if you introduce this particular negation so this is completely different from the formula uh, the formation tree that you have seen earlier so that means each and every formula in a propositional logic comes up with its own formation tree and that has to be unique it cannot be the case that uh, uh, any two formulas will have the same kind of formation tree if they are uh, if, if you have the same kind of formation tree then they are considered to be logically equivalent otherwise each and every formula comes up with its own formation tree so now this kind of idea we will be extending it to the predicate logic and then we will try to talk about what we mean by saying that a given well formed formula in a predicate logic will have its own formation tree. So why we are doing this particular kind of thing is just because of the case that each and every formula comes up with its own formation tree and that is the reason why there, is, there will be no ambiguity when you draw a diagram for formation tree for a given uh, well formed formula in a predicate logic then the ambiguity with respect to the parentheses and the parentheses will not arise when once you form a kind of formation tree. Uh, so now uh, in the context of uh, predicate logic uh, here is the definition of uh, uh, this thing term formation tree we have two different things one is term formation tree and the second one is atomic uh, formula formation tree. So now in the predicate logic we have constants we have term uh, we have constants variables predicates and functional symbols and then with that uh, you can uh, this constants will combine uh, with the help of functions etc and will form some kind of terms. So now how we form this particular kind of terms so term for uh, we have formation tree for terms first of all and it will be like this. A term formation trees are usually considered to be ordered and they are considered to be finitely branching trees it will not go forever and ever and all ultimately it ends up with some kind of atomic formulas it is labeled with terms satisfying the following conditions so what are these conditions the conditions are like this the leaves of the given term that is that is what is going to sit at the root of the formation tree and these are labeled with variables and constant symbols and each non leaf node of T is labeled with a term of the form F and then T1 T T T N are considered to be terms. So now a node of T that is what is at the top of the tree is going to be labeled with a term of the form f t 1 t 2 t n that needs to be expanded you know, which has exactly some kind of successes n successes in the tree it can be 1 it can be 2 etc. You know. So they are labeled with t 1 to t n so a term formation tree is associated with the term with which its root node is labeled. So, so these are the things which we need to note every term t has its own unique formation tree associated with it just as in the case of propositional logic a given well formed formula will have its own unique tree just like that we are trying to construct a formation tree for a given term. So that is going to be if you change some of the things in that term and that will have its own formation tree 
so no two formulas will have same kind of uh, uniformation tree unless until they are logically equivalent or they are the same kinds of terms you are talking about the same kinds of terms they will have the same formation tree so the ground terms are uh, in the context of uh, this formation tree the ground terms are those terms whose formation trees will have no variables on their leaves so you just imagine a tree which has uh, its uh, uh, root at the node and it is like some kind of up, upside down kind of tree it starts with the root that is a node that is where you start with a given term and then you will start uh, it, it, if it is it, it starts branching it out and it forms uh, it goes to the leaves etc and then if you find there that there are no leaves etc then uh, it is considered to be uh, uh, a kind of ground term. Um, so let us consider uh, some uh, examples so that uh, uh, we will get this uh, point clearly for example uh, if you have two terms like this then what is going to be the uh, tree diagram for these kinds of terms so a term can be constituted by uh, these things c is a con constant g is a function and x and y are variables so this is one particular kind of term for which we are trying to form a formation tree and the other one is something like f of d z and g c a and then w so first we will talk about the formation tree for this particular kind of thing so now this is what is sitting at the root and all uh, or you can imagine that it is a trunk of a tree so now so the first term that you are trying to see is this one C and then we have G X and Y and then this can be further mentioned into X and Y so this formula uh, it has uh, it is not these are not considered to be ground terms because this formula consists of variables x and y suppose if your formation tree has only ground terms uh, uh, only then it doesn't have any free variables then that is considered to be the ground term and all for example if you take the same formula like this f of c g of uh, a b for example so this is considered to be a term we are trying to form a formation tree for this particular kind of term so what is important in predicate logics is this thing first you have variables the x y z etc and then we have constants like a b c which are referring to some kind of individuals and then you have functional symbols like f g h etc and then you have predicates so predicates can be something like p x and y etc where x and y are related in such a way they have some kind of property like x is a father of y x is a brother of y etc so these are the things which are the building blocks of uh, this thing and then we have two quantifiers for all x there exists some x so now this is considered to be a term because uh, you have constants and you have a function and then uh, you have followed by some kind of constants and all. So this is considered to be a term which we have defined the meaning of terms in the last class uh, last few classes so we can go back to that particular kind of definition of the term. So now what we are trying to do here is this thing we are trying to draw the formation tree for this one so this is going to be like this the first letter is going to C is C and then this is G of A and B. so this is the way in which you read the formula so it starts with the letter C and then we will go on to the next one that is G A B that is the way computer reads out the things it goes from left to right that is a convention that we follow so now this further reduces to this one A and B so now we need to one needs to observe that in this particular kind of formula uh, these are considered to be leaves of your uh, root root of the tree so all these terms are constants they are not considered to be free variables so 
variables are like uh, x, y, z, etc. and all, where anything you can substitute into x, y, z, etc. So now, in this formula, all are considered to be constants only, and the, and hence this particular kind of thing is called as ground term. A ground term is a, uh, a term which has only constants. It doesn't have free variables at the uh, leaves. So you have C, A, B, etc. All these things are constants. So that's why this is considered to be a ground term. Whereas this one is not considered to be a ground term because it has variables x and y. So anything we can substitute for x and y it depends upon what you substitute for x and y, and uh, the interpretation of this one changes. So now coming back to this particular kind of uh, formula. Uh, so this is going to be uh, this thing f b z and then you have g c a and then whatever you have this is so now this stops here itself you have a term or uh, which consists of a constant or something like that a variable and now this uh, changes to c and a and this goes to d and z so this is the formation tree for uh, this particular kind of term whereas the formation tree for this one is considered to be uh, this one so that is the reason why you know these two terms are considered to be different because they have different kind of uh, tree structure a uh, tree formation tree so it is for this reason that every term will have its own unique formation tree so now uh, we talked about uh, uh, how to draw uh, 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 formation tree for a uh, term and then one important observation that we made is, is that if it is if at all it is considered to be a ground term it will have only constants uh, it does not have any free variables at the uh, leaves if it has free variables at the uh, leaves at the, at the part of leaves then it is not considered to be a ground term. So now let us consider uh, the definition of uh, uh, so now we have we talked about uh, the formation tree for the terms now let us talk about something about atomic formula uh, auxiliary formation trees so what are these atomic formula auxiliary formation trees they are the label ordered finitely branching trees again as is the case of uh, the one which you have seen earlier of depth 1 uh, it is depth 1 because it is all atomic formulas um, uh, and whose root node is labeled with uh, some kind of uh, atomic formula and if the root node of such a tree is labeled with uh, nre relations like uh, uh, r of t1 t2 to tn then it has an immediate successes which are labeled in order with the terms t1 to tn that is the first thing which you need to note the second one is, is that an atomic formula formation trees are finitely branching labeled order trees which are obtained from some kind of auxiliary trees by attaching at each leaf labeled with some kind of term t and the rest of the formation tree are associated with uh, another term t such tree is associated with the atomic formula with which the root is considered to be labeled. So now uh, let us consider uh, some examples of uh, atomic formation uh, trees. So uh, then we will understand this particular kind of the definition that we have discussed earlier. So what I am exactly trying to say is, is that uh, a given term will have its own corresponding formation tree in the same way an atomic formula uh, will have its own corresponding formation tree let us consider an atomic formation tree in all like this c f of x y and g of let us say a z and w so this is considered to be an atomic formula so now the first one it has these three leaves so now the first one is c and then followed by that x and y and then g of a z w so now this this ends here itself and then goes to x and y and then you have 
three letters out of this one is uh, some is some are constant some are variables and then a z w so this is considered to be the atomic formation tree for this particular kind of formula so these are atomic uh, kind of well formed formulas and all so in the context of uh, predicate logic we have three different things first is a given term will have its own corresponding formation tree and then the second one is atomic formation uh, atomic formula which will have its own corresponding formation tree and the second one is anything which is considered to be a formula a formula in the predicate logic is simply like this that it will have at least one free variable if it has no free variable then it is considered to be a closed kind of formula or it is also considered to be a sentence in the predicate logic all these definitions which we have considered uh, in the last class so now so uh, we discussed about the formation tree for a term and then when we have uh, no free variables in that particular kind of formation tree then we call it as a ground term uh, otherwise it is not a considered to be a ground term and then we discussed about atomic formulas and then its own corresponding trees and then let us talk about uh, some kind of formulas which exist in the predicate logic in general so it starts with uh, uh, there exists some x for all x etc and all starts with the quantifies so now the formula auxiliary formation trees are again considered to be a labeled uh, ordered binary branching trees the trees cons uh, labeled as t where the leaves of t are labeled with uh, atomic formulas ultimately at the end of uh, your formation uh, tree all these things are considered to be um, uh, atomic formulas so now if you consider sigma as a non leaf node that is what is going to uh, extend to leaves uh, node of t with one immediate successor so that is let us consider that uh, sigma conjunction 0 which is labeled with a formula either it, it can be simply a formula phi or a quantifier followed by a formula it can be existential quantifier or uh, universal quantifier for some particular kind of variable v so that is what is the case uh, in the first instance and suppose if sigma is considered to be a non leaf node again t with two immediate successors that is uh, sigma conjunction 0 and sigma conjunction 1 that stands for two immediate successors uh, then uh, which are labeled with formulas let us say phi and psi then that sigma has to be labeled with uh, either the conjunction of these two formulas or disjunction of these two formulas or implication or double implication so these are three things which we can have this just tells us that you know how to form this uh, uh, how to form a formation tree for a given kind of formula uh, just we are giving some piece piecewise analysis for how to form this particular kind of uh, formation tree so the formula formation trees are again considered to be order label trees gotten from auxiliary ones by attaching to each leaf labeled with an atomic formula and the rest of its is associated with the formation tree so each such tree is again associated with the formula with which uh, it is uh, marked which is labeled so let us consider uh, some examples for this formula auxiliary trees and then we will see the difference between this thing so now one particular kind of uh, example which we will be talking about uh, which where we talk about formula formation tree so it starts with the, uh, this thing auxiliary formula formation tree and all usually it starts with uh, there exists some x we started with uh, terms and then atomic formulas and then we have these things a given formula uh, in a in predicate logic it will have its own uh, uh, formation tree so now uh, quantify followed by some kind of uh, atomic formula f of x and y and g of uh, a z and w conjunction for all x uh, let us consider another term such as this thing r c f x y 
g a z w it is a conjunction of these two formulas there exists some x r c f x y etc and all for all x r c f x y etc and all first you need to note that it is not considered to be a closed formula the closed formulas will be like this for example for all x for all y p x and y so this is considered to be a closed formula because it does not have any free variables no free variables so that is why it is considered to be a closed kind of formula so now in this case with respect to x this y is free and even other things such as z etc they are also free here a formula uh, in, in that context this is considered to be a sentence in predicate logic so whereas this particular kind of thing is considered to be formula in predicate logic because it has three variables y z and with respect to this is a conjunction with respect to this quantifier we have free variables such as x etc so in that context this is considered to be a formula but not a sentence in the predicate logic a sentence will have no free variables all the variables that exist in your formula are bounded by the given quantifiers so for example x and y are both bounded in this particular kind of formula with respect to for all x and for all y with respect to these two quantifier x and y does not have any freedom. So now we are trying to form a formation tree for this particular kind of formula. So this will have quantifiers followed by atomic formulas and then quantifier followed by some kind of atomic formulas. So now this will have this thing first you need to write this thing R C F F X Y G A Z W and the second one is this one for all X R C F X Y G A Z W. So now left hand side it can be expanded to this thing. So now we have we have to eliminate this quantifier and then this will be not eliminating so this is the way which which to form the trees and all x and y g of a z w I will be expanding only the left hand side of this thing right hand side you can expand it by using same kind of thing. So now it will be like this it will be further expanded to f of x and y and then g of a z w so this further expands to so an x and y and then g expands to a z w so in this way we can expand this particular we can construct a given formation tree for a given formula so only thing what one needs to note is is that each and every uh, given formula will have its unique formation tree so uh, so with that particular kind of thing the important thing which which we will be noticing is is that uh, we can uh, if you have a formation tree then you not have to worry much about the parenthesis for example if you take particular kind of formula uh, like this so usually this is the convention that uh, we will be following we have considered some examples earlier and the preference ordering will be given like this first preference will be given to for all x and followed by that there exists some x and then negation and then followed by that you have disjunction conjunction and disjunction and then implication and double implication for example if you have a formula like uh, this thing like uh, you do not have any parenthesis or anything then let us see how, how to write this particular kind of formula. Uh, so q x implies uh, for all x uh, p x and q x etc. 
suppose if you have if you are given formula like this thing where there are no parentheses uh, which are uh, given here let us even consider rx also yeah where uh, p q r are all predicates and then followed by this there are variables now sometimes I will be writing like this and you can even write like this also in some textbooks q x is written in this sense I will be writing in this particular kind of way. So now uh, suppose if you are given a formula like this then where there are no parentheses here the, if there are no parentheses the problem as in the case of uh, propositional logic for example if you have uh, a formula like this P implies Q or R and this formula can be read in varieties of ways is it the case that P implies Q or R so I am writing it like this or is it the case that this is one way of reading this particular kind of formula and the second way of reading the formula is this thing P uh, implies uh, Q R R this is one way of uh, reading it so there is a confusion of uh, how to read this particular kind of formula now so for that we have we used some kind of uh, convention with which you know we have come up with this thing so in the case in the context of propositional logic uh, we have this thing uh, conjunction or disjunctions implication and if and only if so now if you are given a formula like this P in plus Q or R uh, so now we have only disjunction and implication here so the first preference out of this implication and disjunction is this one so that is why we had put bracket here Q or R and then you put bracket on this one the next one is for implication so this formula should be read as P implies Q or R and you can draw a formation tree for this one it will be like this P implies Q R R so now it will be like P and then Q R R so now it will be like this one Q R R so this is the formation tree for this particular kind of thing suppose if you draw if you have a formula like this thing P in plus Q R R then the formation tree for this one is like this P in plus Q and R P and Q so this uh, X and Y the formation tree for these two things are looking quite different and all so that is why each and every formula uh, will come up with its own formation tree in the same way for example in this particular kind of formula the predicate logic predicate logic formula first we need to do what we need to do is we need to follow this particular kind of preferential kind of ordering for all x there exists some x negation and or implication and this one so now in this particular kind of formula so wherever for all x is there you have to put it in brackets that is the one first thing which we need to do and that the first step we will do this thing and then we will follow the second step later for all x px and qx this is the first step and the second step is, is that you need to give preference to there exists some x so now this will remain as it is except that you need to put bracket here and then there is no existential quantifier you have to worry much now the next preference is given to n so now so uh, this will be like this so for all x px uh, uh, now uh, for this one we need to put bracket here this will become px and not qx and wherever n is there here uh, you need to put bracket here px and the whole formula next uh, the formula which is closer to this particular kind of thing within the scope of this quantity you put brackets here so now this is what is going to be the case since there are no implication or implication is there here so now this formula will become like this for all x px 
px and there exists some x qx implies for all x px and qx now it will have its own formation tree so uh, I think we will end this uh, uh, lecture by saying that what we have done in this uh, lecture is, is that each and every predicate logical formula comes up with its own formation tree to start with we have constructed a formation tree for uh, uh, term uh, uh, and then we said that if there are no free variables in that particular kind of term we said that it is considered to be a ground term and then we formed uh, we constructed well formed uh, we constructed formation trees for the atomic formulas and then obviously we have when atomic formulas are combined we will have a compound kind of formula auxiliary kind of formula and then we talked about formula auxiliary formation trees uh, by constructing for its, its own corresponding formation tree in the next class what we will be doing is, is that so um, what we will be doing is we will be talking about the semantics of predicate logic semantics of predicate logic is not uh, as simple as the case of uh, propositional logic in the propositional logic for example uh, uh, if you want to say that uh, if you want to talk about the truth value of uh, uh, grass is green and moon is made up of green cheese what you will be doing is simply this that you have the semantics of conjunction so a conjunction is going to be true only when both the conjuncts are true and if you if you just know the truth value of uh, these two uh, individual uh, uh, propositional variables uh, this, is, this is a sentence which is represented by propositional variables if you know the value of p what value p takes what you know what value of q takes and all and based on that you can talk about the truth value of a given compound sentence whereas uh, this is not as simple as uh, uh, in the case of propositional logic in the case of predicate logic we have uh, variables we have constants we have functional symbols and then you have predicates then what is uh, required is uh, we need to go into the details of deep structure of uh, this particular kinds of things where we need to assign some kind of things to these variables constants uh, etc and all uh, constants predicates etc then in that context we will be talking about something called as interpretation interpretation is nothing but assigning some kind of uh, values to some kind of things to uh, these variables constants predicates and functional symbols within the domain another important thing is is that it does not make any sense to talk about truth value of a, a given predicate logic formula without referring to any domain. So we need to talk about we need to fix the domain and then only we can talk about truth value of a given predicate logical formula it does not make any sense to talk about uh, whether or not a given formula is true uh, without referring to any domain and all. So whatever is true with respect to uh, suppose if you take the domain as people then if you take the domain as for example real numbers or some other things it might change you know. So the interpretation might change then we will be talking about the certain things which are considered to be true in all structures and we call it as uh, tautologies now. So all these things which we will be talking about in the next class where we will be dealing with the semantics of the predicate logic.